Hi, this is your Byram Stanhope Chiropractor, Dr. Will Holdsworth from Pain Relief Chiropractic, and I'm going to go over desktop ergonomics today. It's going to show you everything that you need to do in order to set up everything properly in the right height and distance, and also to make sure that you're using your devices properly so you're not getting any sort of discomfort in your elbow, shoulder, back, wrist, headaches, all sorts of issues can arise from having an improper workstation and even having a proper workstation that you don't use properly. So, as far as the standing desk goes, we have a standing uh, sit-stand electric base here that we installed. All we did was we took the standing base and screwed it into an existing desktop. It's actually a very inexpensive way to do it. Um, when most people have their uh, standing desk, what a lot of people do is they set everything up too low. When you go to this computer right now, if I were to try to work on it, you'll see that my elbow angle is greater than 110 degrees. We want to have our elbow angle at 90 to 110. Now you don't have to go and grab, I think it's called a protractor, and like measure your elbow angle. All you have to do is just look down. If you have relaxed shoulder posture and put your hands on your keyboard, if you notice, I'll roll my sleeve up a little bit. If I put my hand on the keyboard, you see how my wrist is extended. It's not neutral. It's bent backward like this. When I put my hands on the keyboard, it's an indication that the keyboard is too low. So what we have to do is raise the keyboard up. I'm going to do that with this button here. I think around 110 is like the right spot. It's nice that these things have digital displays on them because you can just remember your number. Uh, when I put my hand on the keyboard now, you can see that my wrist is now in a neutral position when I'm typing. So when you're typing, you want to make sure that you don't rest your wrists when you type. Anytime you rest an area, it's going to pivot from that location. So if I were to rest my wrist while I type, my typing would be looking like this, almost like a windshield wiper when I'm typing across the keyboard. The problem with that is, is the wrist only moves this far. Because the wrist only moves this far, when you rest your wrist, you're making your wrist work to its maximum ability. You're overworking your wrist. If you were to type more with full arm movement, moving more from the elbow and the shoulder, your elbow and shoulder has a very wide range that it can cover. Keyboard is nowhere near the range that I just showed you my ability of motion would be from those joints. So if I type and move from full arm movement, as you can see here, very little strain on the joints because it's not the maximum range of motion that the joints are required to do. That's about the best thing I can tell you as far as keyboard goes. The other thing that I do is I make sure that the keyboard is pulled all the way to the edge of the desk or the keyboard tray. If I have it pulled all the way to the edge, then I'm not reaching forward for it. Notice that I'm not sitting far away or standing far away from the keyboard because that's going to affect my elbow angle as well, which is going to cause a forward rounded posture in the shoulders and strain into the shoulders. So we come close together like this, making sure our shoulder is lined up with the elbow in a vertical fashion. If I were to put this this way, now I give myself an opportunity to rest my wrists. And again, you're going to pivot at the wrist. The other thing that's going to happen is, Obviously, resting is going to cause compression. Compressing this area of your wrist is going to cause an issue into the carpal tunnel. Putting pressure into the carpal tunnel can cause carpal tunnel syndrome. So we move this to the edge. The other thing is, is I have this set up with a keyboard tray because you can achieve a greater distance between the monitor and the keyboard so that you don't have your monitor too low, don't have your keyboard too high, whatever it may be. We just got a simple, this one's called the, um, I think it's called like the Vivo. I'll put a link for everything under the description of this video. We'll put the, the base, where we got the base from, and I'll put the uh, keyboard tray as well. Um, it's really nice, the keyboard tray, because most of the time when you get these keyboard trays installed in these electric sit-stand desks, the thing is, is there's a bar underneath this desk. We're not going to show it to you, but just trust me on this. If, if you have a keyboard tray, the tracks line pretty far back into the desk. And then that will actually cause an issue because the bar is going to be in the way, the track is going to be in the way. It's not a compatible way to set it up. So this is just a simple, you know, screw that just screws in like a clamp 
very easy to use, very easy to install. You did it in like two seconds. As far as the mouse goes, when people use their mouse, what they usually do is they, I'll do this so you can see a little bit better, is they'll actually put their hand on the back of the mouse like this. Now the same thing applies as far as the height of the keyboard and the mouse goes. So I'm not going to explain the difference between the, the mouse height. Uh, you know, it's the same exact concepts as the keyboard. So let's just skip to performance. Now as far as putting your hand behind the mouse goes, again, we're resting the wrist. We're just doing this windshield wiper motion. Not good. What you also want to keep in mind is that you're compressing the wrist. That's not going to work either, right? Same concepts as the keyboard. So to get around that, all you have to do is you take your hand and you put it over the mouse. If you notice here, the wrist is actually supported by the mouse and there's no compression, no contact of the mouse here with the wrist, or sorry, with the desk. So move your arm around like this with full arm movement, shoulder and elbow moving, much greater range once again to be able to achieve rather than just pivoting at the wrist. Now, a lot of people do complain about this. They say there's a precision issue. You'll get used to it, first of all. And second of all, it's okay to do a little bit of precision stuff every once in a while. But try, when I do it, I'll rest my wrist more on the side when I use this mouse so that I'm compressing more this area of my hand rather than the carpal tunnel. So the majority of your mousing is going to be, you know, this wide range stuff. It's not really going to be this you know, uh, pivoting at the wrist. So when you do need to get fine-tuned stuff, it's okay to get a little more precise with that wrist motion only. The thing I want to point out too is the scroll wheel. A lot of people will use their scroll wheel and they'll basically just like scroll like this with their finger and that again, you're making your finger work to its maximum ability. Stop doing that. What you want to do instead is use your full arm movement. Now this mouse is pretty neat because it has a button behind the scroll wheel. It goes in ratchet form so that it's very like precise or I can push the button and it's on infinity scroll where I just flick it and I'll just keep scrolling until the wheel stops. This is the Logitech MX Performance Mouse. They don't make it anymore. It was my favorite mouse for a while. Um, definitely recommend if you can find it, if they still have them out there on third party sites but they do have a comparable one. I don't know what it's called right now off the top of my head, but again, I'll put a link down there below. Now let's talk about desk or monitor height. As far as the monitor goes, you want to be able to look at the monitor, the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen without having to move your head. If you can do that, it's at the right height. You'll notice here we have a monitor riser underneath the monitor. That way we can achieve that distance that I was talking about between the keyboard and the monitor. This way everything's at the right height. The other thing you want to keep in mind is the distance of the monitor. Now monitors are a lot bigger than they used to be. As far as a monitor goes, you want the monitor distance to be as close as possible without straining your eyes, but you also want to give yourself this kind of sensation of this monitor is so close, I don't need to lean forward. Most people will lean forward when they're working at their computer station, causing forward head posture, which strains the back of the neck and gives you headaches. The other thing that'll happen when you bring this close is it'll force you to sit upright so that you have good posture. Leaning forward would make you get really uncomfortable. So what I like to tell people to do is move it pretty close. And if you find yourself with your upper back leaning forward when you're standing, or if your upper back is coming off of the chair, bring it a little closer for now and then try to play with it. If you start getting an issue where you're like, this is too close, I need to like sit too far back, move it a little far back and just go back and forth like that until you figure out the right distance for you. As far as the trackpad goes, I'm going to just move this mouse out of the way. Some people have a trackpad that they use. It's the same thing that I was talking about with the mouse. What people will do is they'll just rest and they'll do this all day, compressing the wrist and pivoting at the wrist. Rather than doing it that way, you're just going to use the trackpad like this, kind of more like, like a DJ almost, at like a turntable, moving your elbow and shoulder around rather than just resting the wrist there. We're going to do it all. As far as standing postures go when you're standing at your desk, Standing neutral is obviously great. You want to make sure to do that for a good portion of the day. 
The other thing you want to do though is consider doing a wide base stance where you stand with your legs far apart. That's another variation of standing that you can use that will give you some sort of you know, rest or difference in the postures without making you go out of a neutral posture. The thing that a lot of people do is when they get tired in one foot or both feet is they'll give one foot a rest by kicking their hip out to the side and bending one knee. They'll do this and give themselves a break. The problem with that is you now have an uneven pelvis which can cause low back pain and or hip pain. What you want to do instead is just grab a foot rest. Now this is just like an ottoman that we're using and you just take your foot and you put your foot on the foot rest in front of you. No pressure goes into that foot. My foot's just hovering there. The majority of my weight is on my right foot. Obviously you can switch and use the other foot as well. And that's the proper way that you want to use a standing desk with the postures and a, a foot rest here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a seat in this chair. This chair doesn't really fit me, but it's not my chair. <laughs> so I don't work up in the front here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this desk and lower it down. I'm probably going to have to move this like this for now. So we don't crush it. But as far as sitting postures go, we're lowering down. And again, with standing, the desk is almost always too low. With sitting, the desk is almost always too high. So most people are like this, typing like this and holding their arms up. Problem with that is you're just going to cause shoulder strain and that's actually going to increase the, the likelihood that you're going to compress your wrist while you're typing and mousing. So we lower down the desk and get it to, again, that 90 degree angle. We look at our wrist angle. If my shoulders are nice and relaxed, is my wrist nice and neutral? Yes, it is. Let's look at the top of the monitor and the bottom of the monitor. I don't have an issue with moving my head. I can just look at the monitor by moving my eyes. So this is the proper height that I would use. The other thing you want to keep in mind is the height of the chair. Now, if you can't adjust your desk height because you don't have one of these awesome sit-stand desks, what you can do is just change the height of your seat. If you're sitting and you're reaching up for your keyboard, raise the chair up. This is actually the highest the chair goes. But if you raise the chair up, you will get a better angle for your elbow so you don't have to shrug your shoulders or compress your wrists. If you can't do that, try lowering the desk or getting a keyboard tray. Like if this chair is already at the max like mine is, what you need to consider is say, okay, well, I guess I can get a keyboard tray, lower the keyboard, that way I can make up for the fact that I can't raise my chair anymore. If you raise your chair to a point that your feet don't touch the ground but everything else looks good, you're going to use a footrest. You can use reams of paper, you can use a box with some stuff in it, get a real footrest, whatever works, that would be the best solution. Notice also, I've ripped the, we don't have any armrests on this chair. The reason for that is, is because armrests are not that great. If you're using an armrest, especially when you're working, what's going to happen? Resting tends to pivot. So now you're resting your elbow into your armrest and you're grinding that area, which isn't good for the nerves or the muscles. The other thing is, is you're pivoting at your shoulder. Your shoulder can only do this much rotation. If you don't have anything in the way, you can move your full arm around and get that full arm movement like I was talking about with the keyboard and the mouse and or the trackpad. Now, as far as um, the seat pan goes, you do want to make sure that you have enough support for your thighs. You can see that I can fit more than my fingers behind the back of the knee. This chair is too small for me. You might be able to adjust the seat pan if you have a proper chair to bring it forward so that you don't have that much space. You want just like two fingers, maybe one and a half that you can fit behind there. That way you feel full support of the chair and you don't feel like you're lean, you have to lean forward in order to be comfortable. Um, you can get an anti-fatigue mat as well for when you're standing at your desk. That will also help with low back pain, knee pain, and hip pain. That's not a bad idea either. And now the other thing that I wanna talk about is laptops. The thing with laptops is that the screen, the keyboard, and the trackpad on the laptop are all connected. So the issue is, is you can't get the independent heights from the keyboard and the mouse as you can with the laptop for, versus a desktop. So the problem that 
people have is they can either get their keyboard and trackpad at the right height and their monitor will be too low, or they get their monitor at the right height and now they're reaching up for their keyboard and their trackpad. What I recommend you do for that is get yourself a laptop riser, which will basically put the laptop at a good height for your screen. You can't type like this, obviously, on that laptop riser, so what I recommend you do is get an external keyboard and an external mouse, and that way you can have your arms at your side the way you're supposed to for your devices, and then your eyes can be at the right level for your laptop. Now you can work on a laptop if you need to for like an hour or for short spurts at a time, but I definitely do not recommend that you spend a full work day working at a laptop the entire time. Not a good idea. So that's basically everything that I can think of as far as uh, ergonomics goes, as far as sparing the elbow, the wrist, the shoulder, the neck, the low back, all that stuff. Um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and drop a line below. I'd be happy to answer it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. This is your Byram Stanhope Chiropractor, Dr. Will Holdsworth from Pain Relief Chiropractic.